Andiamo, 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 Mayday. This is Andiamo calling single sideband 2182 kilohertz. My call sign is Whiskey Charlie Echo 5825. My position is 28 degrees 1 minute north latitude, 83 degrees 43.5 minutes west longitude. I'm about 53 miles west of Clearwater Beach, Florida. I have an injured crew member who has suffered a head injury. I have three POVs. I require immediate assistance. Over. Hoisting. It is often a tense operation in adverse sea and wind conditions. This video has been produced to increase boat crew awareness of the preparation necessary for and the hazards associated with working in close proximity to a helicopter. It will provide boat captains and crews with information about helicopter rescue equipment, conducting hoists, preparing the boat and crew, safety precautions, and what to do should a helicopter go down during a hoisting procedure. The United States Coast Guard monitors VHF Channel 16, single sideband 2182 kilohertz, and 121 and 406 megahertz EPIRB signals. Once contact is made, try to establish the vessel position and relay the seriousness of the situation. Once it has been established that a helicopter has been dispatched, remain in contact if possible. When the helicopter is in visual range, a handheld VHF radio is invaluable in maintaining contact while preparing and moving about the vessel. Our biggest frustration in a rescue case is usually the communications between the vessel that we are rescuing the people from. The first thing they should do is really listen to which um, radio channel we have them on and make sure they hear the directions from the pilots or the crew members in back. The rescue basket is the preferred method for hoisting. Made of stainless steel with collapsible bales, it is capable of lifting up to 600 pounds, but only one person should be placed in the basket at one time. If the basket needs to be disconnected from the hoist hook, it should be done with care so that the bales do not fall, causing injury. The trail line is 3 8 inch diameter, 100 feet long, and made of polypropylene. It floats. It has two brass halyard clips attached, one at each end. In addition, one end has a weak link installed. The weak link end will always be connected to the closed eye of the hoist hook, and it is designed to separate at approximately 300 pounds of force. The purpose of the trail line is to assist the aircraft in delivering a rescue device to a vessel in adverse conditions. It allows the helo to be in a safer position than directly over the vessel, with the boat crew pulling the rescue device to them. When they get a hold of the trail line, make sure they hold on to it securely and pull in as hard as they can versus letting us bring the rescue device to the vessel. I think people are thinking that the rescue device is supposed to go to them versus them pulling the rescue device to them. The litter is used for crew with injuries, which preclude them from being hoisted in the rescue basket. The litter is often hard to handle because it has a tendency to spin. It is made with straps to secure the survivor to minimize the possibility of being ejected. The trail line should not be passed through any part of the litter. This can tip the litter and possibly injure a victim. Connect the trail line to the closed eye of the hoist hook only. The rescue strop is constructed of very strong webbing and stainless steel hardware and provides a quick, safe means of hoisting uninjured personnel. The strop can be placed under the arms, around the back, or over the head of the survivor in one quick motion. To prevent the survivor from slipping out, a slide buckle is pulled down the strop and attached to an adjustable crotch safety strap, which is stored in a zipper pocket on the rear of the strop. The strop is capable of lifting both the survivor and the rescue swimmer. The crotch strap must be secured when used. When not secure, the hook assembly could easily become attached to some part of the vessel. The sling is delivered open to lessen the likelihood of it becoming snagged. 
Care must be taken to ensure that the free end does not strike crew members. Circumstances usually dictate what type of hoist procedure is to be used, but the following are the basic hoist deliveries used by the United States Coast Guard. The direct delivery hoist is used when there is little hazard associated with particular hoist. During this procedure, the hoist operator cons the pilot directly over the vessel and lowers the rescue equipment to the boat. This hoist is seldom used in a sailboat rescue situation due to the hazards presented by masts and rigging. When a hazard exists, such as vessel rigging and weather conditions, or there is a need to stabilize the rescue device, a trail line delivery may be used. This type of hoist allows delivery of the rescue device at an angle so that the helicopter will not be required to hover over the boat for a long period of time. In this procedure, the hoist operator cons the pilot over the vessel to deliver the trail line with an attached weight bag. If a trail line is used during a hoist, the boat crew is expected to handle the line. There are many considerations and hazards involved, and you as a crew member should understand them. One hazard is the potential of being struck by the weight bag as it is delivered to your vessel. Also, tripping can occur if the line is underfoot on the deck. Some effort is required on the part of the line handler to pull the trail line and rescue device to the vessel while the helo hovers off to the side. This may require more than one crewman. The basket hoist is employed for normal crew transfers in all kinds of weather. PFDs should be worn by all. To avoid injury, ensure that the crew member in the basket keeps hands, arms, legs, and feet inside. When the device is ready for hoisting, the boat crew will give a thumbs up to the hoist operator who will commence the hoist. The boat crew must ensure that the basket does not get hung up on any part of the vessel or its rigging. The litter hoist is used to transfer an injured or unconscious person or any case where the person is unable or unwilling to use the basket. When a person is placed in the litter, all straps must be tightened for security. When the device is ready for hoisting, the boat crew will give a thumbs up to the hoist operator and, as with the basket hoist, ensure that the litter does not get hung up on any part of the vessel or rigging. During a rescue operation, the captain or acting captain is responsible for the safety of the boat and crew. Any time it appears that the hoist is becoming unsafe, they should signal the operation is stopped. When it is practical to do so, the operation can begin again. The aircraft commander has similar responsibility and will also break off the operation if an unsafe condition arises. Any rescue operation requires alertness on the part of both the aircraft and vessel crew members. Since the noise level during the operation is extremely high, care must be taken to maintain radio or hand communications at all times. Prior to hoisting, the vessel crew must complete the following preparations. Brief the crew and make sure they understand the dangers involved and to be alert and move with care about the vessel. Have only enough crew members above decks as needed for the hoist. Make sure all crew are wearing PFDs. All sails must be lowered and secured. Remove all covers, bimini's, dodgers, even fenders and cushions. The downwash of a helicopter can exceed 75 knots and is capable of blowing crew members overboard. As a result, any small loose object can cause damage. Lash down any large items on deck, such as dinghies or recreational items. If possible, furled sails should be lowered and stowed. If not, then lash them securely. Remove and stow any other objects that could interfere with movement about the boat. Dress warmly 